When the uh, seven line prayer is gone, then the pe people's photos to get bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Who's reading seven line prayer? Sure. But who's leading the rest of the prayers? This seems to be going great. Okay. So there can lead seven line prayer. Ooh, that's nice. I'm ready. It did you say I'm leading it? If you'd like to. Oh, I, I didn't really think I would. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> I can okay, I'll need seven line prayer. Uh, again. Who's going to do, who's, 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 I just don't know. I just locked on like yeah. anyone else. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be Umze because it looked a little confusion, but then I want to have that reflected in my contract that I have to be Lama okay. and Umze no, at the same time. I'll do it. Dirk, You'll I'll get do, a raise. Dirk, yeah. I'll do both. I'll do both, Dirk, if you want. Because I know you're having okay. the. Okay. So, so All I'll right. Do, I'll do seven line prayer and I'll be okay. okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that's You're on. You've got to listen to my singing, but other yeah, that's that. great. It's fun. <laughs> okay. Um, organ, yogi, no, jam, sham, hama, gay, sa, jam, pola. Yashin Chogi no Drugne Pema Jume Jesu Dra Kordu Kadro Manku Kor Heki Jesu Dog Drupi Jinji Lok Shek Su So Guru Pema Siri Hong Hong Organ Yogi No Jam Sam Pema Gesa Dang Pola Yashin Chogi no Drugne Pema June Jesu Drag Kordu Kandro Manku Kor Keki Jesu Dag Drugi Jinji Lok Shu Shek Su So 
Guru Pema Siddhi Ho. Om Organ Yogi Nob Chang Sang Pema Gesar Dang Po La Yashin Chogi Nob Drugne Pema Drugne Jesu Drag Kordu Kadro Mangpu Kor Keki Jesu Dang Drugi Jinji Lok Shirshek Su So Guru Pema Siddhi Hong Teacher, oops. <laughs> what am I? There we go. Okay. Praise the Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, Endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique supreme ultimate meaning to the Dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path while abiding in the pure trainings. Holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, May I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. 
I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create, by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yadams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith, accepting these out of your boundless compassion. Please send forth waves of your blessings. Iram Guru Radham and Dalakam Nyatiyami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I can't read the next line. This is too small, but I'll start. <laughs> I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Raja Griya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, Compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, 
Because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata, gate, gate, par gate, par sam gate bodhisoha. Tayata, gate, gate, par gate, par sam gate, bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharvati Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Yeah, good morning. I would have mask on. I think people would have a hard time hearing me a little bit. So, <clears throat> but of course, in California, we're still um, we're back to uh, restrictions, right? So we're going to make do. <clears throat> uh, I think the title for today's talk is "Ground Path and Fruition," something very technical like that, right? Um, so I'm going to try to speak to that. Uh, in a sense, the ground uh, could be uh, talked about as the situation in which we find ourselves. Uh, we might uh, find ourselves um, in some geographical position, situation, or some emotional situation, uh, some political situation, whatever. But uh, the ground, uh, from our perspective, uh, Mahamudra Dzogchen perspective, we could say, is the ground is always going to be now, where we find ourselves right now. Uh, generally, where we find ourselves is always going to be uh, a mixed situation. And the mixed situation is going to be, um, what uh, do we have to do intentionally uh, and what do we have to just let be? What do we have to put effort into uh, and change? What do we have to accept? <clears throat> so if nothing changed, there wouldn't be any problems, actually. We wouldn't know any different, and we wouldn't be able to do anything anyway, so no problem. And uh, if things were continually changing, um, then... Uh, that wouldn't be a problem either because we wouldn't be able to make any plans whatsoever. So the problem is that we live in a world of paradox where uh, some things are permanent and some things change. 
some uh, times we have to be intentional and sometimes we have to be uh, natural or let go. Uh, sometimes we know what's going on, sometimes we don't know what's going on. And in fact, usually so is going to be a mix of those two. So we're kind of present, but also kind of somewhere else at the same time, like, like that. So um, where the ground is, we find ourselves um, in a very uh, rich mix like that. <clears throat> if it was just completely one way or another, uh, there, there wouldn't be any uh, necessity to do anything. There wouldn't be any necessity for any training or practice. Um, or there wouldn't be any uh, path. There wouldn't be any fruition. Uh, just completely static situation. So uh, the Buddha's uh, awakening uh, was uh, interdependence, which means that uh, things manifest uh, in this interesting way of both um, needing to do something and not needing to do anything. <clears throat> so uh, please examine yourselves and uh, don't take my word for it. See if that's so. Uh, see if uh, you're not. Um, somewhat uh, mixed situation uh, of uh, somewhat here, somewhat not, uh, somewhat um, satisfied, somewhat annoyed. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that uh, is the situation right now that we have to work with. Uh, even if we ignore it, that's uh, a way of working with it, correct? So uh, we could say that's uh, the ground. <clears throat> uh, so it's it's actually not easy to recognize the ground. It's not easy to uh, come to the conclusion, to really come to the realization that um, uh, there's confusion and there's several things happening at the same time. <clears throat> I sometimes call it like utter panic. It's like uh, the core is some gunshots have gone off or there's an explosion or uh, and we don't know which way to run or should we just sit still? So uh, like current political situation in America, should we relax and sit still now uh, or should we do something? So uh, generally, um, actually there's kind of confusion. So uh, we could say sometimes, in a sense, the ground uh, is confusion, and uh, we start there. <clears throat> it's uh, uh, difficult when talking about Buddhist ideas um, not to uh, get really abstract, uh, because the nature of language is somewhat abstract, isn't it? <clears throat> it would be... Um, nice to just uh, read poetry and uh, sing, uh, but that's never quite enough. The uh, uh, people watching and would be kind of uh, maybe unsatisfied if I just said, well, we've sung and recited some poetry. Uh, this is called uh, in English, the prayers, and we're just gonna stop there. Or maybe we could recite some Shakespeare or Gary Snyder or something like that, and we'd go, that's it. Would you be satisfied? <laughs> so uh, from classical Buddhist point of view, actually, uh, even the text and the Dharma talk should be uh, somewhat poetic. They sh uh, the text, the ancient uh, Indian texts uh, and, uh, and Sanskrit and Prakrit and Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit uh, had uh, some literary conventions that they were supposed to follow. <clears throat> but would, would you be satisfied if we just um, recited texts and uh, did prayers? <clears throat> why, why do we have to have uh, an additional Dharma talk? Why, why do teachers have to say something? Well, I would like to suggest that the reason uh, we like to say something uh, is because uh, even though our poetry and singing and recitations are really neat, uh, human beings uh, need dialogue. 
uh, we need to talk to someone. We're uh, always talking to ourselves in our head, aren't we? Um, we don't have to be on the street uh, talking out loud. Um, we're all doing the same thing, right? We're having a conversation with ourselves internally. So uh, that's the reason why we need to have uh, discussions among ourselves to model and to enlighten uh, and to bring about having uh, a nice conversation or debate or discussion or poem uh, in our heart mind. So uh, I'm hoping that we can have some uh, genuine discussion today and also um, after the talk uh, at 12.30, ask um, students and practice leaders to hang out for a uh, short meeting and discussion about uh, how we're going to handle the rest of uh, the COVID year like that. <clears throat> so I hope some people uh, will be able to take a break and then uh, when we close and then come back or just hang on for uh, that discussion. So it appears at first when we're confused in the ground that if we just banish uh, the confusion, if we just um, decide on one side or the other, that all will be well. But if uh, anyone here has tried to block their mind or stop thinking or banish things, uh, hopefully you found out by now that that's impossible, don't you think? <clears throat> In any case, it becomes an unrelenting war. So uh, the practice that and training that we do is to learn how to uh, be in uh, this samadhi dialogue, not only with ourselves, uh, but with nature, other human beings and animals, and of course in our Buddhist world with uh, non-human beings. <clears throat> depending upon your adherence to classical dharma, uh, there are a whole bunch of unseen beings. Uh, there's uh, beings in the desire realm, like human beings and animals, and then there's beings in the form uh, and formless worlds, and a whole bunch of other uh, characters. Uh, so uh, they're in dialogue or fighting with each other too. But the ground we find ourselves is some kind of uh, conflicted inner dialogue, some kind of confusion about should we uh, just listen or should we talk? Should we uh, let go or should we hang on? Should we decide or just do nothing? Isn't that the case? So what the Buddha found is through uh, a certain way of practice and training, um, we can clarify this experience so that actually um, we can have uh, interesting interactions with the world uh, such that we could even call it uh, truth and wisdom and uh, bliss. So uh, I hope you all can uh, go there um, starting right now. <clears throat> so let me um, pause right here and um, uh, ask some of the um, extroverts in the um, virtual group or introverts if you care, um, am I making any sense? So I don't, I don't, I guess you could unmute yourself and just speak up and then uh, we're, we've all learned kind of Zoom um, protocol now, haven't we? <laughs> Lama? Uh, this is Morris. Um, does it mean simply to uh, accept how we are, our, our mixed state, and sort of work with that and go on with that, or do we have to become unmixed? I'm not. I'm not clear. <clears throat> so that's a do we accept that we <laughs> can't accept, or do we change that we can't accept, or do we just keep changing? So, uh, what actually? Uh, the solution is we have to develop uh, the wisdom, so like that. So whether we call it prajna or jhana, um, uh, you know, rigpa or yeshe, 
um, there's uh, some special kind of uh, wisdom where uh, it isn't biased towards either uh, accepting or rejecting. Does it sound like a cop out a little bit? What do you think? It sounds difficult. Um, <laughs> it, it, it sounds yeah. like I have to have a, uh, a certain kind of uh, self-awareness of my uh, mixed state. That's a good phrase um, imported from psychology. Uh, if, I'm, 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 I, I accept my mixed state and I kind of flow with it, but I'm, I'm aware of it at the same time. Uh, one of the most famous um, practice instructions is from uh, Gampopa, uh, uh, you know, from a uh, uh, student of Minarepa's. And our goal uh, in one of the sayings is to clarify the confusion. So uh, that's kind of interesting. How do we clarify confusion? <clears throat> We could see it as confusion per se. Yeah, de definitely should start. That's that's really nice is to just kind of go, I'm confused. <clears throat> I know when, when we get lost in the woods, uh, uh, what 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 should we do? There there's some woodsy uh, uh, tracker scouting people out there. What if if we really get lost while well, in the woods or in the mountains, what what's what should we do? Look for high ground. Look for high ground. Yeah. This is Karen. What I find myself doing um, two things. One is um, sitting and asking the guru deities to help me see where I, what I need to do, you know, action or not action, whatever that is. And also doing mantra, lots of mantra helps. So one is like, like being still and asking for help. One is like seeking higher ground. Who said seeking higher ground? I can't, I don't recognize. I, I, I did, it's Marie. Oh, good. Yeah. So let's get some other ideas. These are very good. Um, find water, find a stream, follow it. Yeah, they say, they say that. I've heard that too. You know, follow a stream. Uh, uh, definitely know the stream's not going uphill. <clears throat> this is Sharon. Yeah. Uh, pick a direction and go straight in the direction that you choose. Like don't go in a circle. So don't go in a like, circle. Yeah. I've heard that a lot too from uh, campers. Uh, she was like, uh, at least don't circle around. What, what else? The last time I was uh, lost like that in the Appalachians, um, I crossed the same place three times and mm light was running out at that point in time. And you know, mm -hmm. I was not at all prepared, even though I was a scout. Um, so stopping, stopping and really retracing my steps and turning it over, that feeling of being lost was just prescient. And I actually investigated at that moment what it actually meant to feel lost. And I realized it was an overwhelming sense of unfamiliarity and so with that as my definition of being lost, I just started to re-familiarize myself with my surroundings and immediately the path came to me. So I don't, I don't know how to explain that process other than what I went through, but it was effective in that moment. Kind of sorting, slowing down and sorting through things a little bit, sounds like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> uh, 
If you could only follow one rule, I'd say don't panic. Yeah, don't, uh, I would say don't panic uh, is very important. Um, don't, don't use up all the oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was in camp uh, as a kid, uh, we would do stuff like that. Um, if the canoe or something turned over, you could breathe the water in the upside down canoe, but uh, don't use up all the oxygen. <clears throat> so when, when we're lost, there's a certain um, perhaps passive quality about it. Uh, but what uh, we also find ourselves in these conflictual situations. Uh, what what would we do if there's actually we're caught in a, like a fire? You know, has anybody ever been caught in a fire? I know one person here. What do you do in a fire? How do you uh, clarify that? What what do we do in a fire? What's the What's the wisdom there? Sorry, I hit the wrong button. You're on. Okay. Um, stay calm. Recite a mantra. Yeah. Um, it's just like that's all I could do. Yeah. Trust and, other people. Uh, and in a fire, you have to move, right? Somehow you tried. To yeah, <laughs> but yes. you did. Yeah, you did. So, uh, <clears throat> so sitting, yeah. Uh, generally, we can't sit still in a fire. We have to get out, right? So, yes. uh, the Buddha likens samsara sometimes to a fire. Sometimes he likened it getting lost in the woods. <clears throat> the jungle. That, that was a very strong metaphor in India, but so was fire. <clears throat> so our confused situation also is when uh, uh, we're being chased. Yeah. So that's a ground situation. Like, uh, does anybody actually have dreams where you're being chased? That's very common, isn't it? The chase. What, what do we do then? You're being chased. Let's say you're being chased in a dream. What what do you do? Well, maybe some people have actually been chased and gotten away. Well, it's different in the dream, right? You don't in my in dreams I tend to be, you know, just things happen and I don't do anything about it, you know. <laughs> but uh -huh. in reality, if I'm being chased, I'm gonna decide whether to turn around and fight or whether I'm going to run. <laughs> yeah, I'll run it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes a wisdom mind uh, will turn around and confront. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, there's a flight response and then a fight response. And then there's a freeze response. Sometimes we're going to just be quiet. <clears throat> the examples um, are leading me to think that confusion is always um, an emergency. It's always, um, you know, like um, threatening. But is it always? Uh, it doesn't always appear. Obviously, it's threatening as being chased or fire. Um, it, it's usually uh, feels more benign, doesn't it? You know, like, uh, I'm confused, but you know I'll I'll work with it tomorrow. Um, so sometimes it isn't as urgent, but uh, uh, generally in Buddha Dharma, of course, traditionally uh, we're going to stress the urgency. In America, we're all jacked up, uh, so the stress is on relax, right? But generally, it's it's interesting. Um, traditionally, in Asia, particularly in India, it would be you know um, get going, uh, you know, uh, like that. It's like you never know what's going to happen. But uh, uh, 
in America, the confusion sometimes is so overwhelming that we first have to just do nothing and uh, relax, actually. So then again, we, we need a wisdom. We need a wisdom mind. So fire, chased, lost, yeah. Uh, and ongoing confusion, benign, uh, low-level uh, confusion, uh, which seems normal, uh, is actually, um, the, I think, in some ways, the most difficult to work with. What do you think, Susan? It's on this ongoing, like, things are just kind of screwed up, but it seems bizarrely normal. Don't you think that's, that's for well, me, one of the most difficult? Isn't that sort of a, a bottom line description of samsara? I mean, it's a bottom the, line, yeah. It's a bottom line samsara. This just, whether it's dangerous or not much going on, it's just this continuous sense of kind of baseline confusion, yeah. And so it seems to me that what, what seems to work for me, at least all these last several months, has been flexibility and not resisting and just kind of relaxing. <clears throat> but the flexibility is important, has been important for me. And not resisting. Resisting is really easy to do because that's just part of my upbringing, you know, to resist authority and resist being told to do this and that. Uh, if you just relax and not resist so much, it makes it easier too. It makes it clearer. You know, get the resistance out of your mind and then things become more clear. Yeah, resistance is like freezing, bracing. That's a trauma response. We tend to like brace like you know, like that. And then, of course, that um, stance becomes kind of chronic, you know. So uh, there is something about um, uh, learning to be flexible or resilient or flow. Um, that's an important part of Dharma is like uh, knowing when to step aside from the freight train. <laughs> So I keep mentioning this wisdom mind uh, that uh, sometimes I call loving, blissful wisdom. So, uh, you know, what is that? How does that manifest and how do we cultivate it? Um, does it naturally arise out of the situation uh, or does it have to be uh, taught to us and cultivated? Or is that uh, another uh, example of the need for dialogue. What do you think? Well, loving, loving, blissful wisdom does not automatically arise in me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that somehow I have to cultivate it, and I haven't quite figured out how to do that. <laughs> Well, I, I think you're doing it. It's just, it just uh, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. So we're doing something right, okay? Um, but uh, we are aware that we don't have an infinite amount of time to uh, accomplish it. It's present right now. It's fully present right now, and yet. Uh, we have to cultivate it at the same time. It's very strange, don't you think? <clears throat> Seems like um, removing the <clears throat> the obstacles to bodhicitta, um, our perception that you know we have this self that needs to be defended and needs to be cherished and cared for versus people around us can become a preoccupation that is very distracting and really obscures mm -hmm. that um, being present with what is and what's going on and being open and, and loving and connected. So I think the more we can generate 
those states of mind that make us feel open and expansive and put our attention on those things that really draw that out of us mm -hmm. and cultivate patience, cultivate understanding mm -hmm. of the world around us and our afflictive emotions. I think with all those things, mm -hmm. you know, we turn away from that mm -hmm. confusion and that self cherishing and we open ourselves up and sometimes it's an action that we take, you know, like, being a little more giving or letting somebody cut in front of us in traffic instead of like, you know, trying to block them or whatever silly thing it is that we might do in a moment. And just I'm glad you mentioned uh, bodhicitta uh, because um, <clears throat> in the Buddhist tradition, that, that's uh, the, uh, the supercharged way to bring um, clarity to confusion. So it isn't uh, that we bring in the wisdom mind most fully when we're thinking not just of how do I get out of the fire or how do I get out of the forest or you know how do I get away, um, but when we bring in uh, the fact that we don't want to see others suffer, then uh, the full qualities of uh, loving, blissful wisdom mind manifest. So that's why sometimes it's said that bodhicitta is uh, the mother of the Buddhas. So um, it's very interesting how uh, many times our path is clarified when um, we bring uh, the whole situation um, into view, uh, not just our own wants and desires, but others too. And then the situation uh, begins to clarify. We're not discounting ourselves, uh, but we're adding uh, the whole situation. And in our Vajrayana tradition, we call this whole situation um, uh, the mandala or um, the uh, uh, vast expanse, right? So, Dirk, do you like, do you like um, that translation, vast expanse? <laughs> I, I know somebody criticizes that. It's like, that's not good. We don't like that for a long time. What, what's your favorite translation? What do you like? I can't hear you. You have to turn on. <laughs> Sorry, hit the wrong button. <laughs> I like Fast Expanse. I think it's you like pretty Fast good. Expanse. Yeah. yeah. I, I, what, what, I can't even think of an alternative. <clears throat> yep. it, it's definitely, uh, it's poetic, you know, but um, uh, sometimes sphere is used. I don't know, you know, like vast expanse. So it's funny how we, we fall in love with certain uh, words and then the emotions and visions and realizations get attached to them, right? And then uh, that's it. So well, vast expanse to, seems you know, to have a bigness about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than the closed in narrow mind, you know, the locked uh, in the, the situation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, yes, exactly. So, uh, the, the trigger for that, so to speak, is this bodhicitta on a relative level where we're willing to consider other people's feelings and uh, other beings' feelings. Uh, beings can be all kinds of beings. Um, at home, we have uh, two cat beings. <laughs> and uh, now we have like one, one kitty who's trying to come in the door, who's like a, a feral cat. That's always a big thing. Like, do you let the cat in and feed it and then bring it out again? Do you leave the food outside uh, so they can... Um, uh, eat outside. Uh, so, so we are now talking, okay, what do we do? And uh, Sabina said, I think he has, maybe he has something wrong with him, right? Because she's medical. So uh, the situation clarified when she said, okay, we're going to take the kitty uh, to emergency pet place. I think it's in Loomis or something. And then I said, well, okay, I'll join you. 
And then it somehow became clear like that. Uh, so uh, it always goes better when someone says, you know, I'll, I'm willing to go to emergency pets because you know what, they, um, they don't let you inside, right? You have to sit out in the car. Has anybody taken their pet to, you know? <laughs> and then they say, I could be five hours, right? So um, I'll get a lot of reading and practice done. But uh, the bodhicitta uh, and the vast expanse uh, in our tradition includes like all beings, not just human beings, um, but uh, all kinds of beings, beings that don't have bodies too, um, and uh, um, all kinds of different mental events. So um, one time when I was um, practicing and studying with Eiken Roshi, um, uh, there was a student or students, you know, saying, well, what kind of beings, you know, would, would, when you're including all beings as, you know, wanting to uh, help and save and bring to realization. So uh, Ika Rush is very real. And uh, he goes, look, it includes quadratic equations, okay? <laughs> So uh, the vast expanse means we're including all beings. We're including uh, quadratic equations and um, uh, you know um, strange inanimate objects, also like that. <clears throat> so the question isn't so much what can I do, but the question is what's best for the cat. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's having a dialogue in our minds and maybe with the cat, like uh, what's best for us, what's best for all concerned. Uh, it, it might be triggered sometimes by uh, something from the outside or causation apparently outside or apparently inside. But um, many times uh, the uh, realization to a vast expanse um, comes about, talking from a practice point of view, because something that we thought was apparently outside or uh, not included um, becomes included in our uh, mind stream. Uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes people think, uh, traditionally, sometimes in India, they didn't think animals uh, had good in nature but uh, there are many stories about how uh, people became, came to realization because they saw uh, animals, of course, are also manifesting as Buddha, but also inanimate objects and um, other you know, formless beings and stuff like that. So generally, um, many times people have come to insights or realizations because we've included uh, something that uh, normally we have excluded and that has brought a fundamental clarity to the confusion. So in, in, uh, one, one way is like thinking about that is difficult when we're doing Madhyamaka kind of thinking um, because we have to include um, what isn't there. So uh, for those studying tenants, I'm kind of giving a um, uh, yoga char swatantrika majimika approach here. <laughs> so uh, we're we're kind of looking for including what isn't there instead of excluding what isn't there. A lot of times you're thinking, oh, I have to get rid of the misperceived self, right? Well, if it's such misperceived, then why do you have to exclude it, guys? Come on. So uh, uh, if, if something is uh, really a problem uh, as a delusion, then it's not going to be a problem. So uh, I have the flat earth included in my realization, right? <laughs> <laughs> like that. So uh, 
uh, working with others, of course, there are many times we think people are deluded, particularly about uh, certain uh, political situations. Um, there may be one person leaving office, but there may be 70 million other deluded people. <laughs> so that we're not, you can't exclude them all, right? You know, like that, right? Like that. So uh, frequently um, by including something that uh, was left out, um, whether it's seen or not seen. So when going into a room uh, training from one point of view, you can say, who's here? And I'm willing to include them all, even though some people are annoying or don't meet our needs, but also I'm including uh, the people that aren't here. And then uh, and a very, uh, uh, then that's a very complete kind of approach, right? So uh, uh, later, um, in the Buddha Dharma study program, uh, when we're talking, uh, I wanted to include, uh, based on Dirk's request, um, uh, talking about uh, Jumi Palm's Beacon of Certainty, uh, then uh, this kind of uh, totality of inclusion model of knowing is, is very important, right? So we're including uh, what we don't know and what we know and we're including um, delusions at the same time. It's really quite remarkable. Uh, wouldn't you say, Dirk, how Nipam puts it all together, don't you think? Yes, well, that's the one that I respond most to personally. Yeah. Of course, I think he took it from Shantar Akshita. But I do Shantar really Akshita admire was, it. Yes. Yeah, so, just a little scholarly stuff, um, so I can earn my Lama Scholar uh, points for today. Um, so it's very interesting. Um, Tibetans like talking a lot about the first major transmission of Buddhism in Tibet, and it's kind of archetypal because you have uh, the king uh, with uh, one of his queens, Yeshitsoryo, and you have um, the monk, uh, Sandra Rakshida, and you have Guru Rinpoche, the Mahasiddha. And there's something about uh, bringing together those, uh, you know, four energies uh, that's extremely important, like that. So uh, we need uh, uh, those different archetypal energies. And uh, sometimes in Western, we forget to read uh, uh, the philosophic side, um, but of course, without uh, Santa Rakshida and uh, the uh, Yogacara uh, Madhyamaka approach, we wouldn't have our particular form of Tantra that we do today. So <clears throat> a lot of big words, right? But uh, we're talking about uh, uh, a wisdom mind that uh, uh, sees delusion as it is without uh, uh, being biased, right? Very hard to do, don't you think? Yeah, but it's doable. So now it's um, a little after 12. Uh, if, uh, I wanted to spend a few minutes uh, opening up to discussions where you can say this was helpful, this wasn't helpful, I want more of this, or um, please move on and end the show. <laughs> so um, if we have time for some free discussion, that would be fine. I'd like to just throw out that I uh, it was bothering me, so I quickly uh, looked at Lama Tony's translation of Long Chen and the uh, feature of the expert Glorious King and he calls it the great inner space. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what, what poetic words get us, you know, get us there? Great inner space, so uh, like that. Mm. Number one, um, 
Dharma talk, I went to uh, at Naropa in the 70s. My Izumi Roshi came, uh, a well-known Zen teacher who's in LA, and a friend of Trung Paramshay's. And the whole talk was, he just asked one question, what, uh, what, is, uh, what does it mean to be intimate? So uh, for people that um, have had some Zen training or study, uh, a little bit referring to uh, uh, Dogen Zenji, you know, the experience of Zen is becoming intimate with all things, you know. But it was annoying. He didn't give a talk. He just kind of kept saying, what, what is it to be intimate? And um, uh, I think people... Um, after five or 10 minutes, they thought he would give up and give a talk, but he didn't. So finally, <laughs> uh, finally people um, uh, actually started, you know, giving some replies. And those, those have really stuck with me. I'll, I'll do that to the group sometime, but not today. <laughs> Do you, you want to know what some of the replies were? Raise your hand. So it was interesting. Um, uh, uh, Jack Cornfield, who's in the audience, people know Jack Cornfield from Spear Rock, uh, uh, got up and actually took a drink out of Maizumi Roshi's teacup. Uh, I think it was a bit shocked, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, I don't, it wasn't tea. <laughs> um, and sat down, I didn't say anything. Uh, I remember that. Um, and uh, one of his senior students, uh, Genpo Dennis Merzel said, I, uh, can, um, I can smell your sweat from here, something like that. Or, or, Something along like that, and the final, the final one, uh, uh, John, his name Daishan now at Bookbaz, and I think he's a Roshi and, and a psychologist in LA. Uh, he gave the one that stuck with me the most, and he just said, "I'm really sorry you're drunk." Yeah. So, and the whole room got really silent. Because he called it, didn't he? You know, not the other answers were bad. It's just you got that kind of like just nail on the head, head, you know, kind of feeling, right? I'm, I'm really, you know, and it wasn't like a put down. It was just like because Maizumi Roshi was was pretty much inebriated, uh, so uh, that 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 stuck with me. That's. Uh, uh, so it, it was both kind of like uh, uh, inclusive and uh, discriminating at the same time, something like that. So I'm, I'm very fond of uh, John Bookbazen, obviously. So anybody else? You know, that's a question I hear a lot um, in Zen. And sometimes it seems um, that the answers are, um, you know, the cut through, just just cut through everything, and it's it can be brutal, and and so honest that it silences the room, mm -hmm. but then also be just really 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 warm and and um, comforting and. Um, you know, full of love. So wow. it's, it's, um, yeah, it's something they, they, they talk about a lot in, in Zen. And I've always been a little uncomfortable with it because it is so honest. Well, hopefully we're honest at Vajrayana too. <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, uh, I like to talk about that as being like Mahasiddha style, very direct and in the now, right? You know, so uh, uh, Vajana style might be like uh, uh, sometimes difficult, 
because of course we all sometimes appreciate kind of a little bit cutting, but uh, for many people, the most the hardest part is to accept love, right? To say, you know, I, I really love you and really, uh, you know, appreciate. And that can be hard too, right? That just goes directly like that. So, you know, we, we uh, in Dharma, we, we try to have a dialogue where we're, um, we're doing both things like that, yeah. But uh, uh, I'd like, to, as we go forward in a, our work here, um, I think people would like to hear more stories of interactions, uh, which are a big part of the oral tradition too in Vajrayana and written down. Uh, and one of the strengths of the Zen tradition, of course, because of the Chinese influence, they like wrote everything down, all these dialogues, right? Which turned into koans and stories uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should do a uh, closing soon because uh, I'd like to take like 15 minute break uh, for those people that want to hang around and come back and have a short meeting, you know, so uh, <clears throat> uh, hope this uh, discussion has some practical application. Uh, all Dharma should be actually practical, but uh, it does, it does involve uh, thinking and uh, in our tradition, thinking is okay, right? It's okay to think. It's an activity of mind. So, um, Karen, can you do the closing dedication? Thanks. Yes. Good. Go ahead. I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> ah. Oh, I can start. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi, Tenzin Gatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lotsan, magical display of the deep awareness mm -hmm. of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions for the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasurer of optimist compassion, Manju Shri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the Snowy Land Sages, Losangrakpa, I make request at your holy feet. So thank you, everyone. So um, more shall be revealed. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your participation today. And I'll see. Uh, or talk to you, some, some of you, and like at twelve thirty, if you want to hang out, right? Ciao, au revoir. <laughs>